So that's for today, my last session. I'll talk, I'll talk about Drupal Council, a, an overview of the new Drupal CLI. Okay, and uh, first, little, I mean, just little things about me. Uh, my name is Jesus Manuel Olivas, so you can find me as J-M-O-L-I-V-A-S at social networks and Drupal.org, same as GitHub and, you know, most, most of the places. And I do have, I mean, I mean, the owner of a company, we know, company, we are a consulting and agency, we also do trainings, I mean, if there's anything you need, just ping me, and let's keep moving here, so first you might be thinking, I mean, what is this session about, a new CLI or another CLI, I mean, we already have one, right, for several years, and yes, you are right, we have another, we just have, we have one, not one for several years, but there's another, there's also a new one, and we'll see how this is like. It's about. Well, what's what is this? What is this thing? What is this Drupal Console thing? I mean, short description. I mean, long story short, is like it's a tool to generate code, interact with, and to and debug Drupal. So, it is a CLI tool that can help you to do those three basic those three things: interact, generate code, interact with Drupal, and debug Drupal. And what is this tool? What is this about? I mean, I know the description is what's what you can do it, but uh, in Drupal Console, it's a tool. It's based on Symfony components and on Symfony and other third-party third -party components. It is was built using all, I mean OOP and modern development practices in maintain this. So, I mean, I'm part of the uh, core containers. We have David Flores. Myself here and Eduardo Garcia, Enzo, and Omar Aguirre. And it's like we started this project like almost like three years ago, if not three. So who's supporting this? So we know, you know our company is supporting this. Then Nexus, a development shop owned by Enzo in Costa Rica, and Indava company who that did the work for. I mean, then you might think, yeah, no, there's a new tool, there's a new CLI, can help to do do all these things. Maybe it's based on this shiny new tools, but What's the reason why why we have this tool? And yeah, the answer is like because Drupal is more technically advanced now. It also introduced all these like modern OOP approach for for the, for core and for development. It also takes advantage of several third party components. So following this this the same approach that, that D eight, you know, using all these modern practices, I mean, taking advantage of some other projects code and all these new things. You can find out, and we decided to create this tool, this new CLI. So it's following the same pattern that Drupal 8 is doing. Then, keep moving on this. So let's talk some statistics about the project, and for there, we'll move into some live demo. So we have more than, I mean, 355 I mean, K downloads. I mean, I mean, thankfully, we have like more than. We have like 220 contributors now. I mean, if you want to contribute, just ping me. Make sure you ping me. I'm more than happy to help you and guide you to start up with this, working with this project. And we have like 99 releases. We are we have we, we make this project translatable, like multilingual. We have like 19 languages now. Probably the most uh, the, the most complete languages are Hindi and traditional Chinese. And this is how Drupal console looks like when you just when you use a different language than language than English. As you can see, if there is a translation for that, it'll show you. If it's not, it defaulted to the use case defaulted to English. Okay, and so far we have 152 commands. A lot of those are like site integration or interaction. And um, like, you know, there's I mean, like 40 something generators and the rest are debug commands. We are working on extracting uh, those, or decoupling all those in separate projects for the uh, stable release. And we are on RC9, so RC10 will be released next week with new, a lot of fixes and uh, support support for dev desktop. I mean, there's, there's a lot of bug fixes. Remote execution, I mean, remote execution is fixed again on, on the RC releases, so there's a lot of this is coming lately and fast, so make sure you keep the, your project, the project updated. 
well now where you can find this, where you can get this project, right? So there is a landing page, it's Drupal Console Backend. You can just go there, you can, from there you can find instructions to get the project. If you have questions or when you want to read the documentation, we have docs.drupalcouncil.com. And uh, yeah, same, same thing for DrupalCouncil.com. You can go to the documentation, you can go to our Gator channel for getting support, questions. We also open a room on the Drupal Slack channel. So there's, I mean, plenty of places to, to ping us if you have any question or doubt. So maybe you want to write integration for your module or, you know, something else. And look, again, you love it or hate it, let us know. But just try it, give it a chance. Now let's jump into something more interesting than you know all the data and info. How do you install Drupal Console? Okay, how do you get Drupal Console in your local system? So this changes. Maybe you remember if you used it before at the beginning, is you were using a curl command to get the installer. It's still there, but it's no longer the project that it's mostly mostly what we call launcher. But in order to get Drupal Console, what you need to do is make sure you get this in every single project. So Drupal Console must be installed per site. The reason why is we want to support different versions of Drupal, like 8.1, 8.2, and in order to avoid any dependency conflicts between you know, Drupal Console package version or Drupal Console release version and the dependencies on your project, we decided to install Drupal Console as a, I mean, as a package as a dependency in your site. So in order to get this, if you have a site already, you have a Drupal site, you can use Composer. A Composer requires a Drupal Console, and this will get Drupal Console in all of the Drupal Console project dependencies in your project, right? Use Composer require, and then you're all set. Or you might, if you are starting a new project, I highly recommend you to use the awesome Drupal Composer project. And in order to get this, you just run Composer, create project, and then Drupal Composer. You can get this slide. You can get this get this code from the slides. I will share it at the end. I will, share, I will share on Twitter. And just by running this command, you will get Drupal. You get Drupal console. You get oh, and some other tools. You maybe basically will get a Drupal I mean, project just ready to, to work. And how do you run Drupal console? Now that you're installing your site, you can just run it by calling vendor bin Drupal. So this command, you have, if you have a site, you can go to your site here to the project and just run this vendor of Drupal list if you want to, then you get list all of the commands. But since Drupal Console can run from any place, you can go web, but this start getting a little complicated because then you need to know where is Drupal Console installed. Like in this case, since you switch to web, now you need to go like you know, going one level back and all that. Oh, I don't know what. But then, then the easiest thing to do then is to install a um, the launcher, which is a what we call launcher, is what we used to how you get to get it before, you know, Drupal console thing. This is the same installation process, just call, call a curl command and then just get the Drupal fire file, download it, move to any I mean to a place that is globally accessible, then you make it executable, and from there you can just run any command. So I can go here to my site. And just type Drupal, and I will get you know all of the commands listed here, right? So instead of typing van being the Drupal, it, it's easier to type Drupal, and and you will run Drupal console. And uh, what will happen is the launcher will find Drupal console installing your site, and then you will be able to run. So you just need to install Drupal console in each site, and also you see if you want to like have the circuit. You just get the launcher, blow in your system, and the launcher will take care of finding Drupal for you. So it's simple. And then first thing you need to do is just run Drupal init command. I will, I mean, ask you a few questions, like you know, what's if you want to copy configuration files? If you're running this from yours from a site, from a Drupal site, and then it will Drupal console will recognize it's a site and will ask you for copying those configurations either globally in your user. Or use per site. It's it's good to have them per site because you can customize them for for a specific site. So you can just decide that I mean well whatever you want, whatever you want to like the global have them globally. Which I mean, or just having per site. And again, advantage having per site is you can customize and share with 
the rest of your team working on the same project. And it also tells you, you know, all these files will copy it or generate it, give it a pad, and you also generate some files so you can enable autocomplete from the CLI. Then, I mean, let's say, what can you do with Drupal? So you can install Drupal. And in order to do this, you just run a site install command. If you don't pass any arguments, you just site try to install. The interactive mode will start. So this is how it looks like. You know, start asking you a few questions, you know. And based on those questions, you will take that data and execute the command in the end. Or if you want to, you can just pass all those arguments, you know, like this. Try to install and pass all those arguments. And then you will get a install site. And I think I have already one. I already have one site here, which is not running because I haven't started the server. What I will do here is start Drupal, then server command. This will start a um, run the, I mean, the built-in PHP server. So it means now my site is here. It's running, so I don't have to, like, I mean, have or configure any virtual host on Apache or Nginx. I mean, just for testing purposes, this is fine, okay? So now let's talk about code generation. Drupal console contains several commands for generating code. In this case, you have you can generate modules, controllers, a form. So I will try to run some of those commands now. So let's jump into the live demo. Let's see how this goes because you know live demos tend to fail. So let's see how it happens. So I have this command already. So I'm running Drupal generate command, I mean, Drupal generate module command, and passing those arguments. I want to generate the module first. Let's make sure we don't have any. Any modules? So there's no module here. Yeah, there's no modules, and let's, let's see how this goes. It runs and it's telling me any module was generated. It, it means if I go to my fish storm here, there's a module here. It does nothing, only this like, YAML file, because it's only taking the definition. Since now it no longer have the that module file, it's no longer required. I didn't generate it on the argument that I passed. So, so far, we are doing good. So let's keep moving. So now, now we have the module. Uh, let's install this module. Even when, at this point, it's doing nothing, just let's install this. You can run module the install command. It will take care of installing the module for you. And as you can see, Drupal console is really verbal, so it's like telling you what's happening, you know, giving you like messages, like color messages, like green when it's successful, and red when there's some warnings or errors. So now let's put another command. So this generate controller. So this will generate a new controller, and it's basically a page in a route in the system. So I'm telling, passing arguments like, I want to run in this module, I want to create this class, I want to create a route. And I, as you can see, I'm passing in the end, like no interactions, because I don't want to have any, if I'm missing a value, I know I'm not required value, I don't, want them, I don't want the tool to ask me for. So this is here, as you can see, and in the end, it's telling me a new cloud was generated and a routing file was generated. If we go to the system again, we can see there's sort, this new sort directory and controller class is here. Some code is here. Route definition is also here. And it's also telling me that the route system was revealed. So it means if I go something like use the router debug command and use you know pipe grab and you say Drupal lay because that's my module. So I can see there is a new route in the system. And if I go to that route, if I open the browser and go to no Drupal day. And the route, it will tell me, you know, there's, I should implement a method here. So there's no, the output is a default output that the code, the code will do for me. So what I will do something real quick, go to my controller and just change this code to output something, you know, like reading, just passing the, the argument that I'm reading from the, from the URL. So basically what is happening here, I just have this placeholder, which is reading this argument from the URL and it's passing to my controller here. Now I'm using this to output something. So let's go back here and uh, it won't show any changes because of caching. So I need to go here and go Drupal, router, rebuild, and I'll go back 
to the browser, just reload, and now it's telling me, hello, Drupal 8. So it's working, I have a new route, I have a new page in my system, you know, like, say, now I can change here. So it means it's reading this argument that I'm passing from the URL, and it's passing to my controller, and it's showing me this value on, on the page. So let's keep moving now and do something else, more interesting. So we have this, now I generate a module, and I generate um, a controller. Now let's generate a form. Since generating a form is a little complicated, and there's a lot of questions that I need to answer, passing this as a interactive, or I mean as inline, or using the interactive mode will take some, a, long, a long time. I will use one of those files. So we have some examples files that we provide when you run the init command. And I'm providing this YAML file. It means I will use Drupal chain command. Drupal chain command, it allows you to read a YAML file, the definition with the YAML file, and read that metadata and just passing those values to, to, to a command. And, you, and basically you can have something like this and run several commands, like as you can see here, I'm running generate form config, and it also I'm running router debug. You can have as many commands as you want to. So a chain command allows you to read a channel file and read the definition on those, those and that file, and that file can contain several commands in queue, providing you know options and arguments to it, and execute those commands. So I have this, so I'm calling chain and then passing the file path. Here, it's, uh, it's as you can as you can see, it run the generate form config and also review routes. It's telling me all this was created or updated. It means if I go here, I have this new form here on my system. I have the form, I have the fields that I set to define, the email, API, all these fields. And also, a new route was generated, so it means I can go here. So now, I will try to go to my site and log in here. And since I say on the definition that I want to create a menu link, I don't have to memorize where this form was generated. I just can go to configure, and this new link appears here. And this link can take me to the form, generate the form. The form is here. I can enter any values from here, you know, like anything here. It's a numeric, so I can do this, or this. Is a long text, and once I hit submit or I mean save configuration, what will happen here? It's all those values will be stored in the configuration, and it's not so. The command it's not only generating the configuration form from it, it also adding the the feature to store those values in the configuration system. Okay, and. Again, if I try run router debug again, I will see a new route was generated, or another route containing Drupal 8. It's good practice to prepend the module name when we define our route names, okay? So it's telling me we have this route and this other route belonging to this, to this module. And uh, let's, let's now generate something, another, another feature. Let's generate a block now. So lots of plugins. In order to generate a block, we need to add a class, and that class should contain an annotation. Again, here I'm just passing all those inline, telling them I don't tell them the project I don't want interaction, so I don't want to ask me any questions. And it tells me the default block was generated. If I go to my project here, a new plugin block, block is here, class is here. So it's telling me. This block was generated, and you know, as you can see, Drupal console takes care of the voting part, like generating all this, putting the class in the right directory, making sure you add to name the class the proper name, making sure you have the right namespace, making sure you are importing the proper core classes. And as I was mentioning for the purpose of generating plugins, we need to add annotations, and it also takes care of adding the annotation block, the dot block annotation here. So it basically takes care of the of the void part and the part that's managed consuming a lot of time, it's costing you a lot of money, and then you can just focus on what's really matters, what's important, just add, just add value to your project, to your product. And if we go back to the generation, we can see we pass a team region. It means we want to generate this block, we want to assign to the sidebar. It means if I go to my site here, 
and open my site, we can see the block is here. So the block is just telling me implement default block, which is the value was up I mean output here. But then again, the boring part was done. You don't have to worry about that. You just, just, just I mean focus on what's what really matters. And let's do something with the block thing. You know, we have the as I was mentioning, blocks are plugins, right? So we have this plugin debug command, run this plugin debug. It will list me all of the plugin managers in the system. What I was, what I just generated was a block, so let's call this again in passing block as in as an argument, and then it will filter and will list me all of the blocks in the system, right? So this is all the plugin blocks implementations. And now uh, what the one I just generated, I can just go here and see it, or I can just this is the one I generated, right? So I can just go again to this command and pass in the the uh, ID of the block, and I will see some metadata of this. You know, it's telling me what the label is, which category it came in its from, and which provider is bringing this plugin to the system. In this case, in this case is which module it's bringing this this piece of code to the system. So we can see it here. We can see the ID. We can see which class it's the one responding as a block. So if we want to change something, or we want to make sure why something is broken. We can find out the class here, just go open your IDE or your text editor and just start, you know, seeing or taking a look at the code. Okay. Okay, that's, I think that's enough for code generation. Well, we can also generate um, entities for Drupal console. Uh, let's generate a content entity here. So generate an, ent I mean, ent I mean, content entity. Let's, I mean, make it this translatable, revisionable, and I mean, the previous command were probably generated in like one or two lines, I mean, one or two files, a few lines of code, but generating an entity is like, it's a daunting task in the end. So there's a lot of files being generated, hundreds of lines of code. Just running this command will help you to generate this. Now, since the module was already installed, I need to run the update entities command, this is like, Bring it to the system, making sure the table is created. So this command takes care of like putting my site in maintenance mode, running the uh, entity updates, and then just putting my site again off of maintenance mode and rebuilding catch. And now if I run entity debug command, another of the debug commands in the system, we can see all of the entities registered on the on, on our site and this is, our, oh, this, is our, this is the one I just generated here. It's, an account, it's a content entity. It also tells you this is either a content or a configuration entity. And if you go to your site and open the uh, structure section of your site, and then you get uh, the uh, settings page of the entity you generated is here. Then you can start adding fields from the UI. And, and, at this point, Drupal Console do not generate fields for entities yet. We haven't worked on that. I mean, there's a few attempts to 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 do this for contribute. I mean, for in the contributor space, and not being like done, done. So we are not. I mean, it's something we want to add. It's not like a high priority thing. I mean, we know we'll save a lot of time because you can guess. I mean, the same thing we did with the form generation. You can you will be able to do that. You know, like. Once this, I mean, this feature is added, you, know, you can be able, you will be able to generate a YAML file to define your entity, your fields and types, and then just run this thing, and you will be able to generate, I mean, the whole, I mean, a whole set of entities with fields if that it's added. So, I mean, if you want to see that happening, just make sure you ping me or ping any of, I mean, any of us, either on the Slack channel or Gitter, and we can guide you in the process how to how to implement something like that. Okay. So now let's move into something else. You know, I already showed you some of the generation. I'll show you all of some of the debug as well. You know, we saw container I mean, router debug for debug I mean, listing all the routes. So container debug is pretty similar, but instead of showing you routes, show you the services registered on the system. Like if I mean, there's modules that Drupal Core provide a lot of services, and this is not like web services. It's like services, class that do something that you can reuse across the whole system. 
and uh, modules can provide their own services, so you can just run container debug as well to listing all of those services. And we saw already, we already saw plugin debug, so you can debug the plugin, list all of the plugin manager, you can see all of the implementations, you can even see a detail of a plugin so by passing the, the ID as well. Even debug allows you to debugging or listing you know, events, all of the events raised on the system. But you can also interact with Drupal, yeah, right? You know, like give me the side, you know, something like side style, right? So I can go here, this like side status, well, side status, so it will tell me, you know, the status, for me, like, like the, uh, like the report on the, on the, on, on the, from the UI. It tells me which, I mean, Drupal I have installed, you know, if I have, if I have the, I mean, the update, I mean, it's, like, it's, it's like protected or not, tells me a lot of, I mean, all the same metadata that I can see from, uh, I think it's report, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Status report. So this, you can see the same thing from the CLI. So basically, we are saving you a bunch of clients and you know, enter to your site. You can just run it from here. And you can do a lot of things. Like, you know, like you can also do something like, I mean, recover a user login URL. You can install modules, themes, and this is pretty cool. You can just generate data. I mean, maybe you have a site like this one, and you are working on some theming, and you want to like add data to your site. You can just go here and use Drupal create nodes. I will say in this case I will say no. I mean no interruption. I don't want to I mean enter any any data. I just want to accept all of the defaults from here. So let's go here. It's generate like 25 nodes for me. So it means if I go to my side and just reload it, now it's filled with data. It's generate data here, you know. and it also it's here, there, generate all that for me, right? And in all this, I mean, in Drupal 8, in Drupal, in Drupal 8, all this like random generation features is provided by Core. So Drupal console is only all, I mean, this command, so Drupal console already taking advantage of that to like fill inside with data, and the same, the same functionality that you see here for generating nodes, you can do that for users and like taxonomies and some other some other pieces of the project. Now that you generate data, you might be thinking, knowing which um, how many nodes you have per per like per content type, so you can run or use a site a statistics command. This can tell you the quantity of nodes per. I mean data per node, how many comments, vocabulary. So it gives you an overview of all of the, um, most of the data in your site. Um, so you can see, just run this, give you an um, in, uh, overview of what is happening. This is helpful when maybe you are working in a, in a new site or maybe inheriting a site. So you just dump the database that you get from production and just like, you know, see. So you can have a better understanding of how this site was built, how many content that do you have, how many data is there, maybe even it's like help for that for that purpose. Okay. Well, uh, you can also execute Drupal console remotely. I mean, yes, you need to have that installed in your in your site, in the remote site. And in order to do that, you can find out the uh, the available sites or aliases in your in your local computer by running site debug, this will discover the site's definition. Ba I mean, based on some like you know YAML file definitions with, that you have in in uh, your either your home directory or your site. I mean, if you have a site and you want to make the site discoverable as a uh, like site or like site alias, you run site info local that will create a definition for you that will register that for you. And how do you use it? Use run Drupal and use this you know the all known app symbol in the side name, something like you know my site at local or that product or that prod or like develop. Use the name you gave you gave it and the command name, or you can just use Drupal and then and hyphen hyphen target equals to the site name. Again, this could be something like my site that dev or that local or that anything that you use the name you gave it and the command you want to execute against that site. This will be, this is already committed, but it's not yet released. Well, 
a while, but then we just, I mean, based on all the changes that we just did and break the project into several components, it was just took off from that, the first like migration of the two components, but it, it will be here again on RC10. And well, maybe you think, can I write an integration? I mean, maybe you have a module and you want to create your own command? Yes, you can. And you just need to run a command. So basically we have a command to generate your commands. So I will run this here. This is here, it runs, it tells me what's all well, generated. So it means if I go again to here, I can see the new command directory. So a new command class was added here. Class is here, you know. Since I decided to, I want to inject a service, because I am telling you know, inject the entity type manager. The entity, entity type manager is injected here, so I can just take advantage of this within this command and use it for my own purposes. And if we go to the service definition of this, now we can see there's a new service register for this module, and we can see how we are just injecting here. So we are taking from the, the service container, the entity manager, just passing as an argument to the command. This command has access to this, so instead of making both commands, all commands, like container aware and having access to the whole container, which is, could be a little dangerous, we decided to take advantage of dependence injection, which you can see, something you can see a lot on Drupal, on Drupal 8, and just inject those, I mean, any service, I mean, services from the container. So we can skip this part. And well, there are a few current integrations that we are aware of. Maybe, I mean, if you know some another integration, or you have one and you, it's not listed here, let us know. It's good for us to know which integrations are, because I mean, since we are still not stable, sometimes we break things in order to like keep, I mean, moving ahead with the project. So I mean, you have an integration and you don't see it here, or I mean, let them make sure you think of. So at this point, we know meta tag is have integration, web profiler, Drupal commerce, configuration split, and special update have integration. I mean, again, if you know any other, just let us know. And well, how to contribute? You might be thinking, you know, this is kind of kind of cool. I want to help. Well, it's easy. Just fork the project. You know, uh, clone the fork your fork the fork you done in your in your read. I mean, the fork that you just done on your user and just just compose your, just compose your install, get the dependencies, and there are some instructions that you can do for, you know, little things, extra things that you need to do. Again, if you want to do that, just ping us, and those instructions are really, like, being changing. Seems like we are at the point that we just kind of leave it like that, and this isn't going to change anymore. So we are, I mean, uh, making sure those instructions for contributing are in the, in the book. So it's easy to find for users. And if you want to write commands that go within Drupal console, not like in your module, we provide two examples, like an example command and another container work command. We don't recommend to write container work commands, but in some cases you need to, you have to, for some reason. So we provide two examples. Once I, I mean, share those, this, I mean, this presentation, you will be able to follow those, those links. And in here is like a full example of how to do this and with some documentation, so you can just copy, paste it, rename, and uh, you're, you're all set. And some, I mean, a, I mean, a big notice, something that you will, or something that you will notice when you start looking at the code, like opening the code, you will see like, some, I mean, the, you know, the coding style is different that you are used to from Drupal. And this is because Drupal console is a symphony application. I mean, it's not a Drupal module, is a symphony application, right? And the code within the project is a uh, PSR2 coding style compliant, but worry not, the generated code is Drupal coding style, or most of the generated code it is coding style. If you find out that one of the generators is generating code that doesn't comply with the uh, Drupal coding style, again, just I mean, open an issue, or even better, send a pull request. I mean, what's, what's our roadmap at this point? Well, we're working on increasing code coverage. So 
for for the project, there is an issue. You either want to help your good writing test, or you like to write test, or you want to start I mean, understanding how the project works. Writing test will be a great I mean, start. If there is an issue, you can search for it, or please ping us. Mm. And yeah, we are working on improving the documentation and uh, translations for for the project. And again, do you like to help? You make sure you ping us. You know, you let us know anything that you want to know. And I think that's all I have. I was I was doing my planning. I was thinking the demo will I mean the live demo will take more than just take just doing it live. So I think we can just go for questions at this point. Okay, thank you. Um, does anyone have anything they would like to ask? You've stunned him into silence. <laughs> we have plenty of time, sir. Maybe it's too late. Ah, mm. oh, we've got one. It says, sorry, this is a strange question, but what is the red berry icon on your setup? What? <laughs> I think it means when you're swapping between screens, there's like a red. Oh yeah, there, there, next to the PS. This one. Yeah, the phrase. So what? Yeah, it is a text editor. So, so I have all of my code examples here in this little thing. Select node, format. Just do one thing. I've been helping you to have text. So I will, I will take all those examples and just. I mean, probably adding a guest to it, or maybe adding to the slides as well, so you can follow later on on your machine. But yeah, this is this is a text. Like a notepad. Yeah, text. has yeah. asked, um, is there a command to generate AJAX? No, but I mean, it's like if there's something that could be useful, but I mean, if it could be like a feature request, you know, go to the repo, which is Something important. You, it's, we have the project in Drupal.org, so you can go to Drupal.org, you know, and then uh, project and console. But we are not managing the development here, so we are managing development on GitHub. So just go to GitHub. I mean, as you can see here, it tells you please use GitHub. You know, please please for code reporting box. So you just click here, go to the uh, GitHub repo, and just I mean you know. You, like new issue here, you got new issue, you add new issue, you know. I mean, I think that this could be useful for this or that. We have guidelines for contributing any issues, so you can click here to have a better idea how to create one. It tells you, you know, what you can do. But this is for issues, I mean, for reporting this. For new one, just make sure, you know, add why, I mean, what is useful, what the use case for, for this, and make sure you either add the um, link to the to DO, What's the generated code? Like, oh, what's the code that should be generated? And I mean, we can I mean based on the I mean, we can just, you know keep talking on this if it's useful for the project. We can just add it or maybe just be a contributed I mean, module providing this command. It's a matter of like you know start talking about it. Make sure you I mean you want to see this coming. Just let us know and we can either I mean see if we can work on this if the time allows. If not, we can just I mean tell you how to do this so you can just write it yourself. All right, thanks. Um, Conrad asks, what's the difference between Drupal console and Drush? Well, with Drupal console, you can generate code. You can debug the system, you know, like, like router debug, all the new subsystems in Drupal, like routing system, configuration system, state, um, the container, you know, plugins, events, you can do that as well. And you can do things like you can do with Drush, like interact with your system, you know, install site, I mean, install your site, install modules, download modules, things like that. So it's, and it's, it's a different project. And I mean, some, there's some overlapping on functionality, like, you know, side interaction thing, but there's other features like one project do, some features like other, the other do. So it's like, and another big difference is, it's uh, Drupal console is built, you know, it's following the same 
you know, the same approach than D8, like using third party components, using object oriented, like modern design patterns. The, the project is like, you know, fully decoupled of things, you know, it's like you can add, you can even add libraries to provide your own commands. It's like, it's always it built, it's also built different. So console's more of a siphony development, whereas As Drush is Drupal specific. Yeah, but you can do you can do I mean a lot of like Drupal things, you know, like let's say Drupal list. You can do a lot of things interacting with the system, like you know, put your site in maintenance mode, you know, like you can, you know, add roles to user, reset password, you know, give a hash for a password, you know, look at URLs, clean that login user attempts, update entities, you know, install modules. There's a lot I mean you can Install, install a site. You put your, I mean, again, you can put your site in like maintenance mode. You can put your site like in development mode, like enable, disable, or caching, disabling all. I mean, enable quick debug, turning on and off all the all the beautiful statistics and the beautiful queries. So there's a lot of things you can do to interact with the site. I mean, in this demo, I just show you probably the generation part. But yeah, basically, I mean, as I mentioned, Drupal console is like feel is kind of three things. You can do like three things on it. And each one is like group by you know you can generate code, you can debug the system. You can debug again, you know, all of the different subsystems like routing, control, I mean routing, events, plugins, services, and you can do, you know, again, like all the side in, in, in interaction, like installing things, you know, and <clears throat> you know, like generating like dummy data for it. Interact, I mean, use, I mean, add roles to user, all these little things that you can do for site interaction. Um, Igo asks, is the console command for making a profile distribution easier? Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of things to do for generating profiles. So there's a lot of questions. So you generally run this, and we'll ask you a lot, a lot of questions in order to build properly what you want to. You could probably, for this case, you know, create this YAML file for you. And just change what you want to, and just run the Drupal chain and call that file and make make it run for you. Yeah, something cool about chain, you know, chain command, and within those within those YAML files, which let me open one. You can have something like this, right? Like in this case, I'm running several commands, like creating a new site, then installing the site. But you can also pass like arguments. You can have like placeholders. We call this placeholders. It's like, I mean, I can use this and pass arguments to it. In this case, this is arguments. But you can also use chain for and making chain read and I mean environment variables. So you don't have to pass. You know, you can set this in your system. Like you know, the database type, calls, user, and password. So you don't have to pass or get a store instance in place that could be like probably. A security issue. You set those as environment variables. You can use it. But yeah, I mean, I mean, getting back to the uh, profile, there's a lot of questions to it. Like Drupal generate uh, profile. Oh yeah, another thing that you can have with console is the autocomplete. So you can go here and it's autocomplete. You have to enable it. I mean, there's when you run the init command, it tells you. Let's look for the uh, profile. Profile. Search, search help. Let's see how many questions. What? So, help. And let's see how easy it is. Yeah, there's, yeah. Well, it's not, done. It's not that many questions. Profile, machine name, description. Yeah. Uh, all is not that bad. I mean, there's so, there are commands like entities. There's a lot of questions to answer. Or forms that you have forms and fields and field types. But yeah. Profile is not that many. I think team, yeah, generate team is the one who has a lot of questions. Any other question coming? Uh, Feature request? Not really, we've just been asked. Um, what do you think about the per site installation rather than globally? I mean, other than security, do you know another reason why you do it per site? What, I know okay. you, you already said that um, for dependencies for different versions of core, 
Yeah, it's to, you know, we, we decide to go the route to avoid uh, something that you can find out as cause dependency here. It's basically conflicts between dependencies. And uh, since, I mean, there's having, com I mean, composer having dependencies globally, it's uh, complicated because you can have like multiple tools on your system installed so globally, and then between those the, those different libraries can start conflicting each other. So actually, Composer was born to manage dependency in a project level, not globally in the system. And that's why it's a little complicated. And it start complicating things more and more once you start adding more features. Let's say if you're using Platform, I mean, Platform provides you with a CLI. It is also based on Symfony console component. So, and they have their own dependencies of the libraries. And then if Drupal console is loaded, it's installed like globally, it has their own libraries. And then there are some other projects using other libraries. And maybe you're using I mean, different things. Everyone is using different things, right? And uh, having this globally, it's, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, complicated. And again, we want to support like April 2 and 3 and 4 and so on. In order to do that and avoid all these conflicts that can show up, we decided to make this, I mean, available, installable per, and per site. I mean, you still can have the global installation, the launcher, the, so the, the a shortcut just for typing Drupal, and that will take care of, of like finding Drupal in your site. So you don't have to like go like you know if you are like five levels in your site like web modules and contrib, you don't have to like go like you know like moving back different levels and then bender in Drupal. So you can use the launcher for doing that, and then the, then the launcher, which is the global one, is the one who will be providing the remote command execution. So there's there's I mean there's some features. Features that will be at the uh, global level, but in this case, it's like it's global, but it's, it's packaged into a FAR file, which means, I mean, it doesn't, it, it's everything like pre-packaged or in isolated of the rest of your global installations, and you just find a site and launch Drupal from there, like before, this, uh, all the commands were packaged on that, and then you just find Drupal, and then you start I mean, loading the uh, the auto loader from that Drupal site, and that was the one conflicting, doing a lot of conflicts, and that's the reason. All right, I think that's it for the questions. Uh, thanks everyone for attending. Uh, thank you for presenting, and uh, I hope you've all enjoyed these sessions. There's two left. Um, so if you want to hop onto them, it's a debugging session and a. Oh yeah, I'm getting caught out now. No. Debugging and a. God, what's the session called? Fifteen ways to debug Drupal eight and security tips and tricks. Okay, well, thank you for accepting me as speaker. And I mean, thank you for organizing this in this uh, Drupal Day. No problem. We'll hopefully do one again in the future, and uh, maybe we'll see you again. Yeah, sure, sure. And uh, thank you for for.